So you got, want that wooden part. So you drape that over there. You, so you got the glass of water, the yellow and blue seven-day candle. And you can get them 14-day candles they got now. Uh, go up to Rondo's web now if they get some here. Yellow, yellow and blue seven-day candle. Also, uh, you can get also, uh, like I said, some sunflower seeds put in a little plate. Some corn put in a plate. And then make, probably get you a little feather, because every time I've been finding feathers on the ground, and every time I pick one up, bring it back to the altar. Mm -hmm. Okay, that symbolizes the Indian stuff. Take that water, and once you put it in there, imagine this old black Indian woman, because you know they were real dark, medicine woman, and have her to bless it each time you pour it out, any time you want to put some new water. Like I say, any of you brothers, if you look up, you see some sisters, y'all get on up, and y'all be the squatters and all, you know, and let the sisters sit down. Okay, then you are, uh, but then again, sometimes that floor is better than them hard chairs sometimes, so I don't know. The brothers might get the best deal and stuff, because the chairs after about an hour and stuff, booty start hurting, you know. But, okay, now you got the, uh, so you have the, uh, you have all of that. Then you got it, that's, that's representing the, then, uh, that's representing the Indian side of it, or the native uh, side of it. Then you need something African, some cowrie shells, or eye of head root, or scarab, or ankh. Uh, anything African. It could, don't have to be Egyptian. It could be anything African or something African-American. Put your Stevie Wonder record up there or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But, I, you know, mainly just go by all the way indigenous, indigenous. Get the African stuff, you know. Nothing when we were dead. Uh, so you, 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 you're making that merge with the African because the ancestors said that they don't trust us because of the Buffalo Soldier thing. Even though they said they had a few of our, their soldiers sold us out too. But they said those soldiers sold their people out. Their people, these, these Indians. So, um... You want to get that and make that merge. Uh, anything. Then you, you take any religious book, a Bible, a Quran, or anything that's precious to you. Now, anything else you put on the altar is your personal. You put any personal belongings. But those are the things you need to do. And you need to write out a list of everything you want to Thunderdog. Thunderdog is an Indian counterpart of the Christ figure that touched down in this hemisphere. He is the counterpart of, of Obatala, Awas, or any type of Christ figure, Heru. He is the head root counterpart of the Jeshua Ben Pandera counterpart of anything in the Western Hemisphere. So you all need to uh, do this, and you think it's some bull job, but it was one of the sisters that did this. Who was that? Is that sister here? It was one sister did it, and she got all these loans. And yeah, that, but that was you, right? And you, you and it worked pretty good, right? I got $10,000 worth of college loans. Oh, good. So what I'm saying is these are things... They, they told us, once you build that altar, you don't need to be worrying about anything. The other thing is, you need to really, you need to walk that walk instead of talking the talk. When you build that thing, you don't need to be worrying about a certain amount of bills. Number one, you're never going to get from up under these bills if you're trying, trying to balance your budget. You ain't going to never have good credit. You're not going to never do all this stuff. So who, well, why worry about it? We're in these last and final days. We're in these last and final days. So these are some things you need to build that altar. I'll tell you some other things you need to do also, but you need that altar in your house. You've got to put that altar in your house. This is imperative because um, um, Thunderdog... We have another sister that needs to Okay, but well, whatever. Whenever you see a sister, direct her to a seat. So as we do this, we want to pull the libations. So as I call out the gods, you you uh, you say, Ashe. All right, you ready? Yeah. Al-Sut. Ashe. Osa. Ashe. Heru. Ashe. Aset. Vishnu, 
Sai Baba, Krishna, Buddha, Ogu, Nomo, Arma. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Let's see. Okay, okay. Happy, Ani, Yam Hotel, Elijah, Master Farah Muhammad, Noble Drew Ali. Okay, hold on, hold on. Jeshua Ben Bandera, uh, Al Suit, Awas, Kanoon, Rockin Kung Fu, Kung Fu, Astarte, Ishtar. Oh, let's see. Give me a few more. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Mayat, Mutt. I said Heru. Heru. Uh, Heru. I said, I already said those. Uh, I, I, said, I, said, I said his Isis. Um, Sekert. Sekert. Sobek. Sebek, Ha-Ur, Heru, Ra-Heru Kahuti, Ha-Pa-Krat, Timu, Anu, Heket, Heket, Seket, Tekert, Menu, Sadu, Ashe, 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 no more water, keep on going. Yep, get out. Ashe. 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 One more scoop, one more. Say them all at one time. Ashe. To all God, all ancestors, known and unknown. Ashe. Okay. We got that going on, so we got the juice up in here. We invited the ancestors. Uh, First of all, uh, well, I, I say that. Let me get all this stuff in the well. I just throw this stuff on the floor. I really don't need these books. I, I guess I can introduce some of them and all. Uh, I'll tell you some books that I'm going to be dealing with. Uh, number one, because a lot of things are now coming from the spiritual realm. Thanks to a certain amount of um, spiritual talents here in Atlanta and all. Uh, here in Atlanta. Based on what we do metaphysically, things are going to manifest even more with us to the simple fact that those pyramids are built downtown, are built to manifest any thoughts, ideas, and metaphysical uh, things. So whatever we do, we can actually get juice based on those pyramids downtown in those buildings because this is the New Atlantis, and that is coming from Syriac architecture. A uh, few, few things, they got about three, but we're going to get some more, and this is Cyril Aldred's Akhenaten King of Egypt, a King of Kemet. And there's some uh, astonishing photographs in here. One of the photographs is, they were saying that uh, uh, Nefertiti was a, 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 a mulatto, or they were saying that she was some Asiatic, but we know that the Asiatics would look about like me. There was no white people at that particular time in Kemet, uh, uh, in, in the world. Uh, they was uh, still in barbarism, so when we talk about the Asiatics, uh, in actuality we was talking about somebody, my complexion being considered the whole Asiatic world. There was no white people, so... Uh, even though they have lightened her up, and I can pass some of these around, uh, we can put it on the camera, uh, if you can focus in. They have lightened her up a little bit here, but they made clear when I passed this picture around. This is a book by Akhenaten, the Heretic King, by Donald B. Redford. When they, they, have, they have seriously shown you, even though they have lightened her up, because I think she would have been a little bit darker, they still showed you, if you see this real close to that, it's nothing but a sister. And you, when you look at it, you know that ain't nothing but a sister that's walking around here. Another picture of Nefertiti, when you look at this particular picture, you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you're dealing with a particular sister. Because if you see right there, look at them thighs, and look at that booty right there. And I don't care if you are a white woman with a little bit of butt, you don't have no hot and top booty like that. You know that couldn't be nothing but a sister. Like I said before, I'm not was one of the brothers, because if you look at this picture real close, we're going to pass this around, but if you look at the picture real close, you know that Akhenaten is a brother, because Akhenaten is doing one thing on this picture, and they said at this particular time, it was never before seen in Kemet, but at this particular time, they started doing artwork that was a little more explicit. As you know, the white man tried to make something negative out of it, but what Akhenaten was trying to show was the best male and female relationship ever. Number one, uh, relationship ever, and I, well, I'll just pass the book around, but I got some actual pictures that I wanted to pass out for those people, and for those the first people that you can just pass these pictures around to show you, uh, yeah, there's just pictures of, of Nefertiti, uh, to show you, if you can see that, that, that bunkie, you pass them around, just, you know, just, give, just pass them around and show everybody. Now. 
There's another picture to let you know that Akhenaten was a straight up brother, because there's a picture of Akhenaten that has Nefertiti sitting on his lap, chilling, sitting on his lap. So you know he had the first male and female relationship type thing going on, even though we know that we've been doing this for years. But this is the first uh, uh, depiction of it in the 18th dynasty. So you can pass this around and sh uh, show it. Now a lot of these pictures are coming from Akhenaten, king of Egypt. That uh, the guy um, who made the book um, Black Folks Here and There. Uh, What's the name of that guy? It's a book called Black Folks Here and There. Sinclair Drake. Sinclair Drake. He said that um, one thing about Serial Aldred that died in 1981, 91, was that he tried to get the best depiction of what he could find to show that these were black people. So this was a good book to actually get because I, I, when I saw this particular picture, I had to buy the book. But I want to show you this picture of a sister in her face. They always show you Queen T's face, and you say, well, you know that's a sister. But look at this particular sister, and look at those full lips. And you would know that that is actually a sister. But, you know, we don't want to waste too much time on the whole thing that we started out with the, with the ASCAT conference trying to prove that the Egyptians were black or the Kemites Kim were black. We already know that. But this is a good book. It's in bold print, so you know how it is sometimes. You even read better when you got some big print to stare at. So this is a good book. I think this book is 1995, but then again, on the other hand, we bought cases of beer for high more than that. So what the hell? So uh, check. So we want to deal with that. Uh, another good book that we're going to come out of is this book called Tutankhamun. This was the hardback version, but you can get another version, I think, for like nine bucks. Tutankhamun, Ammonism, Atonism, Egyptian Monotheism. This is a good book that we're going to come off of, too. Uh, another book, if you can get it, is an out-of-print book that deals with more of the mysteries of Aton that I'm going to get into today. And it's called The Son of the Sun by Severti Devi. So if you can get this particular book somewhere, fine. It's an out-of-print book. So we want to deal with that also. A uh, couple of other things we're going to deal with because we are hoping at this particular time that we're, we're begging the, 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 the American government to please go into Haiti. If they go into Haiti, we can have enough spiritual leverage to kick him in his ass and get him off the planet for good. So we're begging them, please go into Haiti because the things we're going to come, up, um, come across now, if, I, uh, if we do a certain amount of things, if all of us in here, now you got to, you know how we, we, we got a problem going and listen, listening to speakers and walking out and doing nothing. Because we don't see things as happening in the material realm. We don't count it as being anything happening. That's because the white man has got this particular world locked up, so therefore you cannot see yourself coming to liberation because your liberation is going to come from the spiritual realm. How do you fight the devil? You do things on the level of God. You don't do things on the same Thank level. God. So you can't build no houses. You can't buy no land. You can't get no money. You can't store no food. None of that is going to help you. That might sustain you for a few days. You understand what I'm saying? But if... The ancestors are saying they are mad and they are saying that they got all this power. We got the Native American power. Or the Native power, Native Indigenous Western power. We have the African powers. We got the Asian powers. We got all of these particular powers and we're not even using them. And Brother Juju is one of the main persons that, 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 that pulled my coat on that particular thing. And we're going to get into that when we go into some solutions. So at this particular time, I want to get into this particular uh, science on Ark Not. Number one, uh, uh, not. Should I do an uh, invocation? Or are we good to go? You want to do one? Do one. Okay, good. Mo, mo. Okay, we're going to do an uh, invocation to Obatala in uh, in uh, Yoruba language. Uh, uh, if I say things like I said, when you say these things, don't worry if you're saying them wrong because the ancestors are the spirits. Correct them before they even give them to the gods because there's a chain of command. So we want to do this to Obatala in the Yoruba language. I feel it's more appropriate. Read out all the stuff in the English language. So here he is. Guale guale lo meo. Guale guale lo meo. Ah, guale guale lo meo. Guale parameta. Guale guale. Ah, guale parameta. Guale guale lo meo. Guale guale lo meo. Guale guale lo meo. Guale parameta. Guale parameta. Aku baba ah. Ah baba ah. Li baba kuru kurero. Ipio li lilelo. Ah oku yi bendelo baba ah. Ali baba ah. Li Baba Kui Uro Omi Lino Baba Ku Uri Omi Lino uh, Okuni Bandelo ba Bandela Leo uh, Oba Obatala Iko O Iko Chi Ishilo Ishilo He He Obatala Ipa Ipa Lomil Mi Lumela Pasala Ife Ife Lumela Ila Pasa Ila Kui Kui 
Omo, Ku, Aro, Oba, Oba, Pela, Tuma, Obatala, Ali, Alili, Baba, Kui, Uro, Omi, Lino, Guai, Guai, Lomeo, Guai, Guai, Para, Meta, Ah, oh, let me get this right now. Guai, Para, Miki, Guai, Guai, Li, Mio, Para, Miki, Guai, Para, Mi, Kio, Guai, Li, Mayo, Ah, Guai, Para, Meta, Meta, Guai, para, miki, guai, para, meta. Now, whew, this is the invocation of Obatala. This is in a book called Santerian, African Magic in Latin America by, um, what's that woman name? Uh, Maria. Ma, um, uh, Marjean, whatever that, whatever. Yeah, you can read that out and all. I'm t so tired of announcing people's names in the whole nine yards. But, um, so we wanted to do that, the invocation of Obatala, which is good because if you ever do a Yoruba ritual, you need an invocation that's done, that, that, that comes in, in Europa, uh, in the Europa tongue, uh, believe me, this was even harder to even pronounce when I first started doing it. And all of it, I got it down pat now a little bit, but I, you know how it is, it stood out a little bit. Now, I want to get into Ak Uh These are some things, this is not just a historic collection, oh, he didn't go back to a historic collection, we already know these things. This is some stuff that was sent down by the Brotherhood to tell you that you need to know about the Brother Ak uh, The Brother Ak now, because there's some things that's going on that you need to know because we got to unmask this particular God King for the simple fact that our particular theology that we are built in the West on is based on the teachings of Akhenaten. Number one, the Afrocentric scholars did the brother a bad deal for the simple fact that they looked at the social uh, path because they are into explaining history. So they looked at the social path of what was going on, and they did not look into the particular God, Atan. It was only until this December when I met up with a spiritual fellow by the name of, uh, of the Most High, by the name of Awas. Then I later, up, later on met, met uh, with this particular brother. His name is Melchizedek also, which is his Hebrew name. Then I said, well, what is your Egyptian name? He said, my Egyptian name is Medura Atan. I said, oh, now... This is a link between Akhenaten. I said, is this the same Aton of Akhenaten? He said, yes. Then he said, my name would be Metatron in Greek. That, is, that later on ended up into the Holy Kabbalah. Now, your Holy Kabbalah is the precursor to your Bible, which means that your Bible is the exoteric version to an esoteric version telling you to raise yourself up to Godhood based on the tree of life. Even the tree of life that Amrau um, never talks about the Hebrew one came out of Kemet because we showed on many of my videos the actual Pharaoh holding up the, uh, the actual Kabbalah. One good book is Dion Fortune's Mythical Kabbalah. Another book is by McGregor Mathers called The uh, Morning of Magicians. There's a few books I asked him, asked him to order. One book, excuse me, McGregor Mathers, the, bu the book is called Kabbalah Universalized. Another good book, Creating of That Mutant in Atlantis, the creation of the mutant of the white boy documented in a book called, uh, uh, this particular book called uh, Morning of the Magicians. And I think that's by Powell and Berger, a, a real good book that was out of print that the white boy just released again. A lot of things with Hitler and the whole nine yards were trying to create an even higher race of mutants. So this was a good book to get, uh, as well as some other books I'm going to explain also. So now, uh, so what we want to do is, this particular Medura Atan, which was the actual Atan that Akhenaten was talking about, all of a sudden this particular, in the last three weeks, I, uh, I gave this particular book away, The Son of the Sun, and I was, went back to the brother house and I was looking on it, I said, man, I got to have this back. He said, you can have it back. I started reading some of the things in here and it tapped into some stuff and, 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 and metaphysically I started, it started bringing back a certain amount of clarity on this mystery behind Akhenaten. And as a result, uh, as a result, we've, able, we've been able to uh, unveil an even greater deal of mystery, and I'm going to introduce a couple of other books to you also. Now, let's go into this. Queen T, or Queen Tai, which you've seen several pictures of Queen Tai, who, who was an Ethiopian woman. At the particular time in Kemet, the priesthood started warring. The priesthood against Amun and uh, uh, the priesthood of Amun and the priesthood of Ptah started warring and started going against each other. But it was not to say that the different God forms were different. It's about like the Baptists and the Methodists. You see what I'm saying? All of a sudden, the ideologies of the same one God started splitting up. 
So you started getting that same social breakdown more than a spiritual breakdown, but it was a social breakdown that would lead to a spiritual breakdown. So therefore, at this particular time, it was late into the 18th dynasty. They started partying in Kemet, and you can get the social reference from that from that book, Akhenaten the Heretic King. Wish somebody has that book. Okay, that book, Akhenaten Heretic King by Donald Redford. Yeah, you might want to pass it up so I can say a little things from it. That particular book, as well as some other books, the social structure started breaking down, and people started partying all night. This is what happened. They started partying all night because at that particular time, Kemet had become a cosmopolitan state where it became the particular state. Where you would have, where you would have actually different people coming in from all over, Mesopotamia, Mediterranean. But remember now, all black people might be different. Who hues did the white man want to front now? He want to give you this stuff saying it was different races, but he didn't. But we knew that these these people were all black races that was there, and it was different structures of the same people who had migrated to different. Uh, places and probably met with this uh, age, this Aryan came and coming down, excuse me, and uh, miscegenating with them and they came back mulattoes or whatever you want to call it. Just black people, because if you got the melanin, you black people. The white man knows that. One drop of black blood and you a nigga. He even knows that stuff, you know. So uh, what had happened was, it was cosmopolitan Kemet. They started partying all night. which would, And so the older people said, well, you know, the, the younger people are not listening to what we used to say. And the younger people started saying, Man, I don't want to hear this particular stuff. And this is just, just like you have now, a breakdown. But not as bad as you got now. This is the land of the beast. Nothing is as bad as this because this is hell. But anyway, what had happened was Queen T uh, came on the throne, her and her husband, and she decided that she was going to change this because she was from Ethiopia where you had the god Such Nessie. Sut Nessi, which means the god of the blue black or the blue blue black god. Nessi means people. Sut means black. It means the god of the black people. So they said Sut Nessi, which was this original god, which later on was a was a form of Ra Harkiti, Harakiti, which would be the same as Ra Heru Kahuti, which the priesthood of Om established in Kemet at Heliopolis or Om, one of the first knowns in the first pre-dynastic Kemet. But it was an elder god from Ethiopia, which was still being worshipped in Ethiopia. And what had happened, a Cush. What had happened was she came to the throne and she said, well, these priesthood are warring, so I'm going to try to go back to a much pure form to the Raheru Kahuti, or we would say the Aton of the, of the solar disk that you actually see the particular disk with uh, that you see here, this particular disc with these rays of hands that you're going to uh, see. But at this particular time, this is what uh, uh, Akhenaten turned it into. The original disc would look something like this, and you've all seen this. Uh, you've all seen this, and I'll show you a picture of it to show you. Because, uh, this is the original sun disc, the sun and the wings which is Heru on the horizon, which is at the staff of the Tehuti. So if this is connected with you, this means that also you are God. We got some beautiful things we're going to go into today, uh, including some things on this white boy believing that you're the devil and he is right because you are his devil. I want to go into that because I got some other information for the last election people and all. But anyway, Queen T, she decided that we was gonna do, she was going to uh, uh, establish this new religion. So when she, so the actual hierarchy sent her a spiritual son. Now back up. Now that's starting to look like some other story you know of a time when things started going and then all of a sudden you got this particular woman that sent a spiritual son. Right? Check. You'll find out that the, the grapes don't fall too far from the tree. So she was sent a spiritual son. That son was born and that son was, uh, uh, Later on changed his name to Akhenaten and later on stepped down from Pharaoh to co-regent. Now at this particular time, what had happened was, he decided when he was a young boy, he saw all of this stuff going on. All of the people partying and all of this stuff breaking down. So he decided when he got to a certain thing, certain, certain age and became Pharaoh and had the power to do something, he was going to establish the older religion that his mother brought him up in, raised, that he was raised with. So he established, once he became the Pharaoh and became co-regent or whatever, he established this particular Aton. Now, Aton is a form of Heru. So all of a sudden, this is a Heru that predates the Osiris 
that Osiris or Osa being the father of Heru, this particular Heru is a form of Ha'er, which would be the original harvest the Ella, the Heru, the Ella, which would go all the way back to the original form of Soot, the first blue black primordial god of all time. You see, the problem, the reason why you don't find a lot of things in the Boys books is because you're looking at the later mythology from Ptah going on into uh, Ra and Osiris. Ptah is a form of Soot in the original uh, 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 a mythology called Soot, which means black. The original name for the god form that we have, there's no other name that predates this god form. It's called Al Soot, which means, Al means God and Soot means black, or the god black. The, at this time it came from a place called Al Camoria. Al is the place that you would have the word Atlantis and this whole nine yards would come from, and Lemuria. The original name for that is Al Camoria. Al means God, Kim or Cam means black, and Moria or Moor means Lord of the Earth. And we know that we can date these Moors more than just the Islamic Spain because we had the Greeks talking about the Moors. That uh, Brother Hakim Bey has told you the black Moors in Greece, in Greece, and the Romans talked about it, and this predates the actual Islamic Moors. So we understood that the Islamic Moors brought that particular Islam into Europe to tame this particular savage beast at this particular time where he introduced alchemy to give that particular Moor a soul. I mean, excuse me, that European a soul. Which alchemy is the black substance of the work making of the black. I'll get into that in a minute. If you don't have that, you do not have a soul. So anyway, this particular soot, Raheru Kahuti, uh, is, is a form of Atan in Ethiopia. So he establishes this Atan in Ethiopia. Now, at this particular time, this Atan is called the sun. It's said, well, black people worship the sun. Well, your sun is nothing but a reflection of a greater sun. So when you look at that sun, and, me and, and, and we finally figured this out, I said, well, there's a black sun. And then me and the brother said it once, and no, wait a minute, hold on. It, start thinking on another level, start thinking on a metaphysical level. Our sun is that is of that of a greater sun. That greater sun, our sun, our earth goes around the sun every 365 days. Our sun goes around a greater sun every 300 and every, every, every excuse me, every 26,000 years. That's called a great year, the end of the eon of the end of the world. That greater sun is called Sirius. But our sun is a reflection. That means that our sun in the universe does not exist. That means that if it's a reflection, now it's not just like the moon that reflects the light of the sun. We are saying that our sun being a reflection of a sun, so that sun out there is serious, of 93 million miles away. It's just a reflection because remember now, if you go out in space, you can't find it. It's black out there. And see to me, closer you get to the sun, the lighter it should be. I told my mama that when I was young. I said, well, she's seen me. So they go out in space, it shouldn't be black. That's closer to the sun. It should be lighter than what it is here. But that's black out there. And you don't see anything but Sirius is one of the biggest stars you see. And they show you all these pictures of these planets, but they don't show you this picture of the sun. That is because that particular sun is Sirius. But it's a greater reflection of Sirius. At night, it is the brightest star in the actual sky. In the daytime, based on your ether or your uh, atmosphere, it is a reflection of the sun that you know of. Because we understand that they, because the brotherhood told me that Amun Ra and Atan was one and the same. It's just that like it said it's just a social break, social breakdown, and they didn't kill him because of the, the the worship of that. They killed him because, or they thought they killed him. Or so we thought this is the key. But they did away with him based on a social breakdown, getting rid of the army, and and his so-called said was mad because he married Nefertiti and the whole nine yards. <coughs> but anyway, that particular son, Amun and Atan is one and the same. So are they talking about Amun Ra? Are they talking about the sun? Are they talking about Sirius? The first time I asked Melchizedek, I said, was Amun Ra the sun? He said, yes, it's the sun. Then I said, well, your name is Medu Ra Atan, which means Medu means the word, Ra means the sun, and Atan means the sun. The Ra, the sun, in, Atan means Sirius. This means the word of the sun in Sirius. Ja means the sun in Sirius. Atan means the sun in Sirius, or the sun and Sirius. So I said, so that's Atan is Sirius. But then he came back and said, well, Amun and Atan is the same. I said, but I thought you said that Amun was the sun. I said, 
said, because how can it be the son and be serious at the same time? And then I said, then we put this stuff together. I said, oh, that's right. Our son is a reflection of a greater son. So that what we see out there with that son is serious. It's just a reflection of that particular son. And I said, oh, so it's one and the same. So when we look at 93 million miles away or eight light years away that we call the sun behind the sun, the sun behind the sun is the sun. Now, are we talking about God or are we talking about the sun? We'll get into that in a few minutes. What they mean by that particular, is it the sun or is it God or is it a spirit? Well, we'll get into that science in a few minutes. Some of you have heard my videos and already know what's going on. Now, it said that this particular sun of this Aton, Bert Aknaton, with his last name is Aton, which means that he is the son of Aton, and Aton being his father. That the, he said that the actual Aton was used as a channel to the Pharaoh. So in actuality, what he did when he tore down the actual governments, they were actually channeling to him. Now remember, Moses went somewhere on a mountain. Remember, uh, uh, Muhammad went somewhere on a mountain or some type place. And every time they go somewhere, they get into deep meditation and get a divine revelation. That's called channeling. White people do it every day now. That's all you have. And they channel this particular information which inspired the Holy Quran, which inspired the, the, the Torah. Well, stick with me because we're going to get real deep into this Atom thing and show you some things that went on. So he was a channel for the sun. Now they said that this particular first god with the winged disc, was Ra Heru Kahuti was seen in human form at first. Then he changed the, he got rid of the human form and changed it to this particular sun that you see with the rays in the hands and said that you are nothing but a microcosm of the macrocosm. You are a solar product of this particular sun saying there ain't no difference between this sun and you. It's just that right now you are playing a role, like an acting role in a, physical body in a shell, but there's a sun also in you. And these particular rays, which are hands that are supposed to reach down and touch you and lift you back up to the product that you are from. You are the microcosm of the macrocosm. So that particular first, this god Atom was in human form as a hawk-headed deity, a falcon deity called Heru. Heru the elder, which goes all the way back to the god Sut, or the god Awas. Now, first Akhenaten what had happened was he established this particular religion and got rid of the priesthood and the whole nine yards. He had a particular, at that time I think it was an, an advisor that later on became Pharaoh. His name was A. And that's the word A-Y-E is his name, Pharaoh A. And he warned Akhenaten. He said, look, that the priesthood are, are mounting up against you. He said, so you got to get out of here because now I'm going to share some archaeological evidence of him being in another place after his reign in Kemet. But I thought they had killed him. See, this is a mystery. Now, 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 listen, now listen to the story and see does this look like it's actually two people that you know of. It warned him and told him that he would have to leave Kemet after being in there. I think he reigned for 17 years, I believe, which is a pretty good while. At first, he had the Atom worship coinciding concurrently with the almond worship, though they didn't have any problem. Then he decided that I need to get rid of the other priesthoods altogether. Because the brotherhood told him, said, look, some things are getting ready to start messing up. And, we, and so what we want to do is we want to go back to the right and exact form of the Godhead, even though the other gods are the same. But we are now, at one time, we were advanced enough that we can understand the divine netters. We can understand the divine equation based on a puzzle, and when you put it together, it represents the one God of the God one that you can get, that all of the gods was monotheistic from the book, um, from Fetish to God, Ancient Egypt, Light of, um, Fe from Fetish to God in Ancient Egypt, E. Wallace Burge, done 1935 before his death, and said that I thought that these gods was mono polytheistic, but they was monotheistic all the time. It's just the different components, as we call uh, netters, when you put them together, they represent the one God and the God one, and the Africans always worship the one God. But these Africans were so advanced, they understood the netters out of natures and they put them in animals. Why in animals? Because they understood if you put it in the animals, people change, cultures change, ideas change, but animals stay the same. Nature says stay the same. Now, unless you get a beast on the planet and start killing them, making them extinct. And then he even killed the planet. We'll go into that in a few. 
Now you all stick with me. I know this is, is this might seem a little long, but you got to stick with me because we got juice now, and we'll show you what you can do. And I believe if every one of you start doing these things this week, on into the rest of your life, every day, we can get this beast off the planet by the first of '95. Serious business. This is what's going down. So y'all stick with me so you can get the juice. You've been moaning, and I know y'all sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right? Check. Now, to get back, this particular Pharaoh named A told him, said, listen, the priest would have been warned, and you have, at first he, 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 he had him going concurrently. Then he said, I'm going to get rid of all of Amun and Patah. Then this made a big uproar in Kemet. And this particular person named A came to him and told him, said, look, he said that you got to get the hell out of here, he said, because they're going to come and they're going to kill you. But what we didn't realize is we just assumed that they murdered him. Dr. Ben and a couple of them said that they, they murdered him. They, some people said he was poisoned. Some people said he, his throat was cut. But in actuality, his Akhenaten was the one that was poisoned. We have history of that. I mean, excuse me, um, Tutankhamun. But not Akhenaten. It's a mystery between Akhenaten and this particular Pharaoh A. Now check it out. He said, you must leave. And Akhenaten fled the Sinai Peninsula, or the Mount Sinai. Mm -hmm. Oh, now the story is getting familiar, right? Okay. At this particular time, when he fled, the evidence of this particular archaeological evidence is found at Mount Sinai, Sinai by an uh, Egyptologist by the name of Flinders Petrie that, that was in the late 1800s and had an expedition to Mount Sinai based on the biblical myth and found all these Egyptian hieroglyphics and found out that Mount Sinai was nothing but a colony of Kemet because Kemet ruled all of that at that time. Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Summer, Babylon, all of that was ruled by Kemet. So Mount Sinai being in Kemet was in actuality a form of Kemet. And so therefore when he went there, he didn't go to no place but one other part to it, one other place somewhere at his home. But they said, okay, we're going to give you this. So they actually got the actual documents of Aton as well as Akhenaten being in Mount Sinai. Oh, but I thought that Moses was the first father of monotheism. We understand that the first father of monotheism was Akhenaten, right? So you can get this from Flinders Peachtree, but I'm going to give you a particular book. But the particular book, this particular African's thesis was on it, but then again, uh, by him not tapping into the spiritual world and finding out what really happened, He's off a little bit, but therefore you can still read it when you, you, you and, and, and compare it with my, my stuff that I got from uh, Mel Kesedek, uh Thursday, based on another sister that's helping me out now. Akhenaten, they put Tutankhamun up, and he became his, which was his brother, his younger brother. He became Pharaoh. This gave Akhenaten time to go to Sinai and actually work and actually improve, or and actually what he did was he developed his religion of monotheism, okay? Now, the key to this whole thing was Moses, a Musa, was, which means child, a child drawn from the water. It also means water. Musa was, in fact, a student of Akhenaten, and he was a priest of Akhenaten. And I, was, I want to get a document here. I want to read something to you. Uh, let me get this document. I want to read this to you, you know, so we can get this on, on film. I'm going to document this right quick. Y'all stay with me because I want to go into this alien agenda and I want to show you exactly what we got to do. But we got to put this out because we, uh, we need, um, we need this particular information. Now, uh, I think it's in, um, page 75 or one of those. Hold on one minute. Bear with me. Uh, put this right. Okay. Moses, I'm going to do document something that Manetho. Now, Manetho, who was a high priest of Kemet, when the Greeks started ruling, the Greeks said what? They said, well, who was this particular Moses that the actual Hebrews are running around saying is their, their emancipator of, or a liberator? And were there slaves in Kemet? Now, we know that there was never any slaves in Egypt. But anyway, I, I document Manetho said that Moses was a priest king and a student of Akhenaten. Now, what had happened was, you have the word Aton. That particular word Aton comes from the, uh, you have a, 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 a Hebrew word Aton, that's A-T-O-N. The Hebrew word would be Adani. 
Now, you know that the Africans in the Semitic language, they use a, a D instead of a T. So Adon, Adon would be the particular Adani, which would be the Hebrew word for Aton. So in the Hebrew word for Adani means the Lord, the great almighty, the Lord. So this is a link between the same Godhead, and you can get a book called Moses and Monotheism that bears witness with this with Sigmund Freud that had to put this book out his last year of his life, or a couple of years before he died, because he knew he had cancer. And he had had this book, and he had known this particular information for a long time. But he had to put this particular information out because he wanted to give the people the truth. And so he put this particular information out before he died. And we knew that he tapped into some works of Gerald Massey also that he did not um, um, he with the Gerald Massey in his books of the, of the beginning says you that Adon, Atum, Atom, Amon, At Atan, and Adani is the same people. So he tapped into that particular uh, 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 thing and so he put this particular work out but we understood that he had to put this particular work out because he understood that in fact this was some truth that is going down. Now, the, 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 the word A-I, Adani, uh, A, Adani means my, Ad Adon means Atan, which means serious. The knee of the, of the, of the, of the, of the I on the end means my, or mine, or the possession. So it meant my Atan, in another word that we're talking about here. So now, this is a, a correlation between the Egyptian God and the actual uh, Hebrew God. Now, what happened was, at this particular time, he fled to Sinai. And what had happened was, he could not speak the words, he could not speak fluent uh, Hebrewism. What had happened was, he had already started adopting a certain Hebrews to be his students. He couldn't speak of, of some Hebrewism or uh, 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 the Hebrew language. Now, there's a book I'm going to introduce. The name of this book is Moses, the Pharaoh of Egypt by Ashmid Osman, which is, uh, you can get this name again, but I'm going to show you something in the particular book where it says in the Bible, and you can read this in your Bible, uh, I'll tell you the chapter, um, that it says that now Moses could not speak Hebrew. Excuse me, Achnot could not speak Hebrew. Then it says, now, I want you to put, when you read Achnot, now when you read Moses, I want you to put the word Achnot in front of Moses. Now it says, Moses said unto the Lord, I am not equipped. I am slow in speech and slow in tongue. Then it says, this is the reason why Aaron had to teach the uh, Israelites and he became the spokesman for Moses. Then it said, and the anger of the Lord, who was kindled against Moses, and he said, It is not, is not Aaron, the Levite, thy brother. I know that he can speak well. This is in Exodus 4.14. The other one was Moses said that he was, he was not equipped in, uh, in, 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 in the tongue. He was slow in the tongue, and in the language was in 4.10 of um, Exodus. Now, the key to this whole thing is this. Achnaten could not speak the tongue of the Hebrews. So that, mm, that sounds just like an Egyptian king that could not speak the tongue of the Hebrews. So, then he had this particular person, Aaron, said he could speak the tongue. Now remember, Moses was an Egyptian priest, or a Kemite priest, which Moses is known as having some link with the Hebrews. So you know now that Moses was Aaron, and Akhenaten was Moses. Why? Because we have no history of rec record of Moses, only in the actual biblical record, and that biblical record was what? It was recorded 700 years after the death of Moses, or Aaron. This is, and it's like Dr. Ben said, you go all over Kenneth. You go to Goshen, where he was so-called born, no records of a Moses. But we have the records of the Mosai kings, and the, which was Moses was an Egyptian name, Achmoses, Tuckmoses, and the whole nine yards, which means to draw from the water, or it means child. So now, but we do have records of a king in Kemet by the name of Achnaten that rebelled against the system. Okay? He rebelled against the system, and he tried to establish a new monotheistic religion. Remember? So now, all of a sudden, if you look at the book of Exodus and you look at the whole Moses thing, we don't have a record of one person, but we have a record of another person. 
which is Akhenaten. Then we see that the actual teachings of Akhenaten, we knew that Aton, and we knew that Moses being a priest of Akhenaten, and the teachings of, of Akhenaten would actually be coming from, uh, we knew that Moses had these teachings, but what we didn't realize that the actual life of Moses, because Moses did exist, he existed as his priest, but the actual life of Moses was the life of Akhenaten. Who rebelled, and also when he fled, he fled to, he fled to Ethiopia and took on an Afri he met an African queen, an uh, Ethiopian queen, and he took on this particular Ethiopian queen. Let me give you her name. Her name is this Ethiopian queen name is Adonis, or uh, Atanit, which in actuality is showing you that what he met there, whatever, what kind of thing they're they're, they're trans. Fusing, a, uh, 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 putting this stuff all together. When he met this particular queen in Ethiopia, he met a religion in Ethiopia that was, in fact, the religion of Adani, or uh, Atan. And Moses, because this Adani, or uh, Atani, uh, is the same one, and he took on this particular person as his wife. Now, a few other keys to this particular part. Once he got in the place, what happened was you had... King Tut ruled after he, he left. He's in Sinai. He's getting his religion together. Then this particular Pharaoh that warned him at first was the Pharaoh A after they killed King Tut, or King Tutankhamun, because his first name was King Tut Tun Aton, which he was a, a, a member of the Aton faith. Then he restored the priesthood back and he came put his name to Tutankhamun. That Amun on the end. But they said, oh, that ain't good enough because you used to worship Aton. And when you get Real powerful, you might establish that again. So they went and took him out and poisoned him at the age 19. Because he came on, I think he ruled for nine years. And he came on at the age 10. And they poisoned him at the age 19. So now, what had happened was, after he died, the A took over, this particular Pharaoh A. Then a particular Pharaoh who was a sympathetic person to Aton too. Because he was the first person that warned Akhenaten that he had to leave and get the hell out of Kemet. Then this particular person, Harum Hell, came on. And he was a person that was hostile to the Aton worship and reestablished and really tore down all the temples and established the uh, Amun worship thoroughly. Even though what's his name? Even though uh, uh, Akhenat, I mean Tutankhamun, gave them the actual uh, go ahead to start worshiping this again. Then, after Hiram Heb died, he had a vice president. He had an actual uh, a general by the name of Ramesses the First, who was Seti One, who was the first of the Ramesside kings. He came on, and when he came on, he became Pharaoh. Then, after 13 years of Akhenaten being gone, no, excuse me, uh, I think it was almost, yeah, it was, I think it was 13 years later, Akhenaten comes back in, and Ramesses in some of the descriptions describes himself as being the ruler of all of that of Aton embraces, meaning that Aton worship, I'm the ruling over this now, and I'm an almond person, but was he an almond person because his name was Seti One, and one of the original forms of Aton is the god Sut, or Set, which is not talking about the evil Set, but we're talking about the good Set, and Seti One, so he was a, a, a ruler of that, and he was a believer of the of, of Set too, the Seti One, that he changed his first name from Ramesses I to Seti One, who was the father of Ramesses the second who built the temple of Seti One in Abydos at the year of 22, which on the temple of Seti One is the same one where they got the white man being the devil up in there and being this particular created man in the temple of Seti One in the inscriptions. Now, he he comes on. At this particular time, now notice the story. Moses supposedly had gone back into Egypt or Kemet to get his particular people. Remember, he's supposed to go back into the Hebrews and told them to let the people go. Well, in actuality, because Hiram Heb died, and that was the end of the 18th dynasty, Akhenaten said, hey, it's time for me to go back up in and get my throne back. But when he got back, Ramesses was this powerful ruler, and Akhenaten said, hey, I'll tell you what, I don't want no confrontation with you. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just get the rest of the people who believe in our time, and we'll just go to Sinai. And at the particular time, you notice you have a thing about Moses' rod. That was a discussion of Moses' rod was actually the actual rod that the Pharaoh had when he ruled the dynasties. You see this scepter, this particular rod. So when he came in and he threw down his rods and the magician threw down their rods, that was nothing but a discussion over the rulership of Kemet because you ruled by this particular rod and the rod was indigenous to the Pharaohs. 
You understand? Which was which was a pharaoh's type of uh, 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 ornament, or what you would call it. This particular rod. So he said, I tell you what. He said, I don't want no, no part of this. He said, I just want to just get my people, and I want to go. Now, this is what happened. At the particular time, you know of the killing of the, when Moses supposedly had killed a particular Egyptian. Well, there's an inscription, or there's a passage where they said they want to find out about that. There's a passage here in the particular book. It says, among a letter that was written to Akhenaten when he was ruling by King Abdu, Abdid Khalid, the king of Jerusalem, which in this king accuses Akhenaten of allowing the Hebrews to kill an Egypt, to, to Hebrews, of allowing the Hebrews in Egypt to kill an Egyptian official without being punished for the crime. And this is an actual a document that's saying that in actuality it was Akhenaten that was being accused of killing some Egyptian official. And this is also that is a thing that is also in the writing. So now what we have. To break this thing down, and we also know that the Ten Commandments, Akhenaten being an actual king, he knew of the Ten Commandments, and he carved up ten of those from the 47 negative confessions, or what you would call the, uh, 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 the 47 laws of Mayat, and he talk, carved those ten up, you know all that story, and gave that also to his people. And he just patched up this particular religion and gave it to the actual people. Now, what had happened was, when it comes to Akhenaten, was... That Akhenaten, by him being Aton, and by Aton being a form of Heru, Akhenaten being the embodiment, and he was, uh, and, his, and his mother, Queen T, having a spiritual son, in actuality, not only is he the Moses figure, although Moses existed, but Moses existed as a person that was under tutelage under Akhenaten. So therefore, we can actually have him as Aaron. Now, not only was he this particular person that existed, but since he was a spiritual person, and Atan means Heru, and we know that Heru means the original Christ figure, that means, in fact, that the historical Christ that they're talking about, they understood that there's a, a mythical Christ, which was Jeshua ben Pandera that got killed in Jerusalem or, or, or Palestine for, you know, for doing some things and, and messing with them Jews' money. You know that whole thing. But we understand that he was the historical Jesus that they took the teachings of a later Jesus that predated him 10,000 years on the book and another 600,000 years on the written word. That Heru goes back and predates Osiris who is the Christ figure. That particular Christ figure that we know of is Heru, the mythical Christ. But he always comes down and touches down in human form. The human form this time when they're supposed to have saved Kemet, he came down in the Pharaoh Akhenaten. And at that particular time, when he came down at the Pharaoh Akhenaten, they say, okay, Akhenaten got rid of the army that was messed up, what it might have been. But if they would have gone and taken heed to what the actual hierarchy sent them, which is called Medura Atan, which is called Melchizedek, which this particular Jesus Christ supposed to have been the order of Melchizedek. Well, now, wait a minute. Melchizedek says his name is Medura Atan, which Akhenaten says Atan is his father. And now we get in the Bible version that Melchizedek, Jesus was of the order of Melchizedek. So now we see this particular story being recopied over and over again. So now they sent this particular spiritual person down. And they wanted this particular spiritual person to clean up Kemet and get Kemet back on the path. Then they said it wouldn't make a difference whether you didn't have an army or not. Because if you're on the right spiritual path, you can't nothing penetrate that anyway. So what had happened was because they got did away with him and they didn't kill him, because they did away with him, and he went into the Sinai Peninsula, and actually what had happened was after he died or whatever, the person who taught them the Hebrew tongue that they called Moses, who was Akhenaten, was the one that was attributed to Akhenaten's life and teachings. But he was only a, he was only a priest of the Akhenaten. But therefore also, too, if he's teaching the Hebrews as a new adopted people that Akhenaten did, had to get to for the simple fact that he left most of his people, but Hebrew is actually, when we say Hebrew, we're not talking about nothing but a group of Egyptians or a group of Kemites. Because that go all the way back to that Hyksos thing, which was a group of Kemites. So when we talk about Hebrews, all we're talking about is a group of Egyptians. Because we know that the Hebrew language is nothing but copied from the hieroglyphic language. So in actuality, this was just a new people that he called Hebrew. They were nothing but ancient Kemites. 
It's just like you got some people that's in Georgia, but you got various different people. Some calling themselves Moors, some calling themselves Nation of Islam. It's the same thing. Even with the actual name, so these particular Hebrews were nothing but a branch of the Kemites that left. And so therefore, since he got, because it said, out of Egypt I will call my son, which was Akhenaten because his, his father was Aton, which was a form of the ancient Ha-Ur-Heru. Y'all all with me? <laughs> now at this particular time, if they would have kept these particular brothers and sisters in Kemet, Kemet would have never fallen. Therefore, there was an excerpt or extract of people that left, and these people are now the and indigenous people, or those people travel across the Atlantic, because we know the whole thing, and you'll be in bondage inflicted in 400 years. In, in a land not your own, we know that was not Kemet because there's no historical record. But we do know we got the same version of that in the version of the world of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 year prophecy in the version of the world where they give you the complete story. And they said it's these black people in America for a short story. So we know that the actual people that he took out is what the actual Mel Kelsey told me to tell you was us. You understand? So in actuality, they ain't no different. Those are our brothers and sisters in Kemet too. It's just that you got to take a people out, and we are the burden bearers for the whole Africa. Because we know that Africa ain't got nothing on their mind. They're trying to get the hell away from Africa. Go to England, go to France. You understand? Come here. You understand? So therefore, we know that we are the actual burden bearers, and we are the, the strongest because nobody else could survive what we have survived, because even the Africans that died off, we are the strongest. So therefore, we are that lineage that they're talking about, but that lineage that they're talking about is not a Hebrew lineage. lineage. It is, in fact, an Egyptian image of uh, um, lineage, which, we, which, which you have. The Hebrews is a certain sect that left. Out of Egypt, I will call my son. This particular book by Osman, he, proved, he says that Moses is Akhenaten. And he says there was no Moses, it was only Akhenaten. But the hierarchy told me, yes, there was a Moses, just as Manetho said, that there was a Moses, he just was the priest. So in actuality, he is telling the truth. This book by the name of As Ashmid Osman, they're going to have some here, they're going to get this book here, it's coming from England. And the mysteries of Akhenaten Saul. But what he didn't know, uh, or what he, he tried to, uh, he, he did his homework. But the point about that, there was a Moses, but he was the Egyptian priest, just as you can get the five dollar book, Moses and Monotheism, that I just showed. Moses and Monotheism, which Sigmund Freud also proved. Now, the guy, um, what's the guy that wrote black folks here and there? Um, again, um, Sinclair Drake said that he could not understand why the white people were so crazy about our night. But what he didn't realize is these white people knew something early on when they went back into Kemet. They knew that Akhenaten was actually the Pharaoh, was the teachings of the Pharaoh Moses. So in actuality, they bear witness to Akhenaten. And so we reading stuff from a historical path and not really studying the Godhead. We say, well, socially, this man did some messed up stuff. He was a heretic. He was a person that tore down Kemet. But in actuality, saying white people loved him for that. But in actuality, the white people knew that this particular person was, in fact, Moses in the teachings. And Moses would be equivalent to an Aaron, which would, would be the people who actually taught them the actual teachings. Now, there's a part where he had to go in and he had to compromise and he had to compromise by changing, he had to go in and these particular, there was these particular people where some of those people were coming from cosmopolitan Kemet were actually people that actually worship Jehovah. And so he had to compromise and then the word Adani Jehovah arose as the two part of the system put together. But they're saying Jehovah is none other than unlike the, the other God, but he just said it's to put it together because he understood that Jehovah meant also the son in Sirius too, Jah. The sun in Sirius. Or the word Tech, which means the sun in Sirius. Atan is the sun in Sirius. Adani is the sun in Sirius. Heru Kahuti, which is the original form, is the sun in Sirius. Which is Sirius 1, the, the, the actual sun as Sirius. Because you remember, then we have, since we have the grandson, Allah means the sun in Sirius. Because we ask, um, because, because this brother, he said, what he, the reason how he could piece this thing together, and I always told you, you should do this. He said how he pieced this together is what he couldn't find in the Bible, he would find the rest of the story in the Holy Quran. So right there is telling you that you're supposed to read both of the doggone books together, and that's why y'all arguing over this thing. You're supposed to read both books together. And this is the reason why he said he got further when he would pick up the Quran and he would get a little more on the doggone story. You see, uh, the, the, the Allah 
is a form of Adani, which means the Lord also, because we understand that Adani means the son in Sirius, and in the Holy Quran it tells you this is the God who created both male and female from one single ejaculated semen, and will create all things anew. He is the Lord of Sirius in the surah of under the star. But why would they have the moon and they would have the star? Why wouldn't they have the sun and the moon where the temples of the sun and the moon is in Mexico? Because the sun is Sirius. So therefore, when they showed the star, they were showing the actual sun, and they say the star and the crescent, but that star is Sirius, which is also the Greek god Pan, which is the Chinese god Shawan. All of it goes, which is the blue star creature in the Hopi Indian, which we talk about the same one godhead. So he understood this, so we have the actual, the actual origins of the Mohammedism, coming right straight out of this particular part where they also talk about the Mahdi coming back. The Hebrews talk about the Messiah. It's just that this Christian religion came up and threw a monkey wrench in it because they stopped kept saying that Jesus was here and not only was Jesus here, all the rest of you can never be like him. <laughs> but in the book they put passages in there, is it not written in your law that ye are God? John chapter 10 verse 34 to 36. And be ye as I am. So they say Jesus was a composite figure that went too doggone far that says, or did he go too far? Or did the writers, because when we know of that particular Jesus on the earth plane, he told the people to be like him. And said, just like I have the attributes, he said what? Great works have I have done, greater works ye shall do. Just as I have the composites to be this Christ figure, you have it in you also. But as the people started writing, mainly what it was, John, I think? Well, it was not John, it was um, Paul. As Paul started writing, after a while we looked and we got this particular person that's the supreme being that over anybody and nobody can get to nothing. So therefore, he's an unapproachable God. You see, and this is the breakdown in one of the hideous forms of what has been going on and why it's been keeping you in slavery because I'm going to get into the alien agenda in a minute. I'm going to tell you what the aliens said about these doggone religions. It's no problem for you to look at the scriptures because the scriptures predate the religion. They go back before time. But the doggone religions, the sectarian religions, is slavery. And they said if we had a chance, we'd get rid of all these doggone religions. So now these are some things that's going on now. Let's, so we have concluded that we have concluded that Akhenaten was Moses. Moses was his particular priest who ended up being Aaron, which was the actual teacher. Because he was the teacher that taught them the tongue, they took the attribute, they, they took the actual priest and not the actual person who was the person who actually taught the priest. And the actual life of this particular person growing up in Pharaoh's house was